you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for having me here. I'm really honored to be here, and uh, I'm very proud to be recognizing the region with this award. Um, yeah, so my name is Tokal Hanai, and I'm currently a PhD candidate at MIT. This building here is not an art theater. It's actually where the computer science and AI lab is, and I, that's where I work. And so for the past five years, I've been working on developing AI and machine learning technologies for processing speech and language. So, uh, what is this next? I switched it off. Oh, okay. Oh dear, I come from MIT, can't use tech. Oh, okay. <laughs> So um, there's a lot of cool research out there, uh, a lot of research utilizing AI. Uh, one of them is not what I work on, but one of the, the really hot things out there is self-driving cars and autonomous vehicles. And one of the reasons I think that this work is really, really attractive is because it's a very tangible physical problem, very measurable when the AI system works. So you can tell that the AI works because the car is moving from A to B, no one got hurt in the process, and you can evaluate your system very clearly. But what I'm really interested in is if you end up in this situation, an awkward, very human moment, it didn't go as planned, you may not have said the right thing, can you use an AI system to evaluate and model the softer parts of life? So the journey from A to B. Can you evaluate something that we generally consider to be very human and very innate, which is emotions? And I'm gonna show you uh, three things that I'm working on that looks and explores that domain. So most recently, I uh, developed a, an AI system that can evaluate depression from conversations, and it can do really, really well. Uh, very well relative to medical baselines, which was really, really exciting because that opens up the pathway for assisted, uh, AI screening technologies that can assist medical professionals. But it's still, very constrained to a clinical setting. And the reality is most of our time is not spent at the clinic. It's spent outside of the clinic doing other things. So what would be super cool, if you can get an AI system to evaluate natural, organic situations and scenarios when you're engaged in normal conversations with other people. Can it figure out the mood of a conversation, whether you're happy or sad? And it turns out you can. I'm going to show you hopefully a video that uh, shows an AI system that I developed evaluating the mood and positive and negative moments in a conversation. And I started school and I remember the first day I was so excited. Yeah. I got my notebook out and like my pencil bag and I had it like on the table because I thought I was going to learn to read and write that first day. <laughs> so I was just ready and then the whole day went by and it was just like introductions and stuff like that and I was kind of sad that it ended like that. But I was, yeah, because I thought I was going to learn to read and write oh, wow. the first day. So your expectation was just like, that's it, you're yeah. going to be an adult, you, you can yeah. do all these I was cool like, tricks. I'm going to go to school and I'm going to learn to read and write, and I was just so excited. So, so when I first developed the system, <laughs> thank you. What got me really, really excited was like, oh, like I wonder if you can personalize this. I wonder if you can get it to give you feedback, whisper in your ear if something you know, goes wrong or how to improve that interaction. Um, give you a buzz in your wrist. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of opportunities out there. But still, like, I don't know that, you know, you're just going to have to rely on an AI buddy. I think there's something more. And it's exactly what mTech is doing. It's this community. It's bringing people together. So if you really, really want to start to intervene in how people are behaving, and you want to improve uh, the social challenges people are facing, it could be depression, it could be finding their next job, you want to build a very, very strong community of humans that are very, very well connected. And you can imagine the scenario in, say, uh, a university where you're trying to build uh, school spirit, trying to get students better connected, you're trying to reduce isolation in your community. This could be in your workspace where you have silos and teams are not speaking to each other. People are not effectively transferring knowledge within an organization. And um, you can even imagine this in a you know, healthcare setting where you want to connect uh, different kind of patients together for support. So that's, this is an actual plot from MIT of a system running there that's building community over the last few years. And it's also running at, at different places uh, in the US. 
And so I want to leave you with this uh, final thought. It might be a little cheeky. But I think what would be really cool is if you can build a community very intelligently using an AI system. And if you can do that effectively, then you eliminate the need for the AI system to begin with. And you eliminate potentially the need of an AI social coach or an AI doctor because you have a very, very rich human network that you can tap into. And if you need any help, a new job opportunity, a new work partner, a, new, um, a medical doctor, you can find them in your network. So with that, I want to leave that final thought that in a human context, a great, a great AI system works to eliminate itself. Thank you. <laughs>